Come on, make some noise if you're excited to be in God's house today. Amen. <laughs> December 31st, New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's, you guys. I'm so glad you decided to come to the house of God. I believe there's no better place to be on New Year's Eve than in God's presence, worshiping Him. Can I get an amen, somebody, you guys? Happy New Year. Uh, last week, Christmas at Discovery was pretty amazing. How did, you guys, did you guys enjoy that service? So there was 4,717 people came to one of those services, and 438 of them gave their life to Christ. Come on, give some praise to God. That's almost a tithe of attendance. That's like almost 10% of everyone. Here's what I want to do today. In the final service, no matter where you're watching, Northwest Online, Outdoor, so glad you're here. What I want to do is help you prepare for the new year. I have high expectations. I don't know about you, but I have high expectations of the year of freedom and what God can do and is going to do in this next year. But I think that we have a role to play and much of it right now on December 31st is to prepare ourselves. And so I want to help you prepare for the new year. Um, I'll even share with you some of the evaluation things I do. How, what are you evaluating? What are you assessing in your heart, your life this year? Moving on into crossing over tomorrow into 2024. And to be, to be honest, there are some things that should not go to 2024 with us. There are some things that need to be left here in this year, December 31st. Leave it here and we'll talk about that as well. But first, one of the first things that um, I want to talk to you guys about and one of the things that we do to prepare ourselves for the new year is 21 days of prayer and fasting. If you've been here at Discovery, this is what we do every January. We begin the year in prayer and fasting. So I want to teach this, teach about this for a little bit before I get into like evaluating and how we're going to move over and cross over into the new year. But our 21 days of prayer and fasting starts next Sunday, January 7th through the 27th. Um, it is a powerful, when you combine prayer and fasting, it can be extremely powerful for your life, for your faith. I'm telling you, if you've never done it, um, go on this journey with us and just see what happens when you actually align your life with prayer and fasting. To, to, and I'll talk about that, aligning it to God's will. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 says it like this. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, here's what happened. The Holy Spirit spoke. Have you ever heard from God? Anyone here? You ever hear from God? You ever get an impression from Him or know what that feels like to feel like the Holy Spirit is like breathing something to you? Like a thought, an inclination, a direction, just God pulling you, depositing something. Some of you guys know what that feels like and His voice sounds like, even though maybe you haven't heard it in a while. Others of you have not heard this beautiful voice in your life, the voice of the Holy Spirit leading you. And I'm going to take you and invite you on this journey of prayer and fasting, because I believe if you do this, if you go on this journey with us into this new year, I believe you're going to hear from the Holy Spirit in your life. And it's going to be like a now word. It'll be something very specific and personal to you, like God lead, like he always desired to lead you in your life, not for you to like wander and wonder, but for him to like lead and guide and give you direction specific to you like to your life, to your marriage, to your career, to your move, to your dating life, to your whatever. You're, like God wants to speak into it, but sometimes we're just not ready to hear. So here they are, they're worshiping, they're fasting, they're in the right place, they're, and, and the Holy Spirit speaks to them and says, hey, I set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, and, and that was a word that was in season for them, but you got a word in season for you that God wants to get to you. We just need to be ready to hear it. See, fasting without worship and without the word and without prayer, fasting without these things, you guys, it's just a diet, okay? This is not your annual diet meal plan. This is not what's, what's happening here. This is a supernatural practice. We fast because we are hungry for God's word. We are hungry for God's spirit and presence in our lives. Fasting is not just a physical discipline. It's a spiritual feast. But when the Bible talks about fasting, there's a few reasons why people fast in the Bible, why you should probably have a purpose for your past fast as well. People fasted for repentance and realignment. That was often the fast that, that people would do. They fasted for help and direction. God, any help? I don't know what's, what's, God help me. And then he fasted for a consecration or a preparation when God was about to do something new. They fasted before they stepped into what was new. Like Jesus, he fasted 40 days. After being baptized, he fasted 40 days. And, and we, he was in the wilderness. And right after that fast, he steps into his assignment. He steps into his destiny. 
Jesus said that there are certain kinds of freedom that you have, that he has for you, certain kinds of breakthrough that don't come but by prayer and fasting. I'm telling you, you guys, I hope you go on this journey with me. Let me give you the four types of fast that you can select. I can make, I'll make some suggestions for you, but I'd love for you to select for yourself a fast for 21 days. You can do it. It's not as hard as you think. And, and you don't need to like, you know, some of y'all think I, I, like it's fasting and everything. That is a type. But let me give you the four types of fast that you can select, okay? Number one is a selective fast. So this is where you're just removing certain elements from your diet, certain food groups. A popular selective fast is the Daniel fast. I've done that many of our 21 days of fast experiences. I know a lot of you have as well. It's where you remove all the meats and the sweets and the dairies and the breads, and you just focus on like water and juice and fruits and vegetables and legumes, beans and nuts and stuff like that. That's kind of a selective fast. You can do a selective fast. You can do a partial fast, okay? So this is a part of the day, certain meals of the day. This is sometimes called a, a Jewish fast where they would fast from sunup to sundown or maybe from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. You get a block and you say, I'm gonna fast, during, during this window here, okay? The third type is a complete fast, which is one that you're probably most familiar with. It's where you just no food, just water, maybe a little bit of juice to it, but, but just water is what that complete fast is. And then there's one that I, I'm adding this year. I talk about it a lot, but I'm adding a name to it, a soul fast. And so no matter what you do, no matter what you fast, I'm encouraging every single one of us to do a soul fast. What's your soul? Remember, it's your mind, it's your emotions. There are some things that, that maybe you got into your mind a little bit too much, you, into your emotions. There's maybe, maybe you need to fast from social media a little bit here during 21 days. Maybe there's certain news that you're watching or television or entertainment that you just, need to, you just need to move back from that a little bit. That's a soul fast. Ultimately, we fast simply because we want God more than anything this world has to offer. Can I get an amen, you guys? So Jesus thought about this in many occasions in his most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. It's in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the most famous message Jesus ever preached. Right after he gives us the Lord's Prayer, he actually talks about this. I want to show it to you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. He says, and look what he says, and when you fast, not should you fast or if you fast, that's not the question. Okay, this is maybe a missing ingredient to many of, of your faith journey, your, your Christianity, your, your experience of faith, maybe missing this. It was always Jesus' intention and expectation that you should fast, that you would be fasting. I'll tell you why in a moment. But Jesus said, hey, when you fast, not if, but when, don't make it obvious like the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. Oh, look how jacked up he looks. Look, he's so malnourished, and look at how, oh, gosh, he's, look at him, he's holy. No, <laughs> practically everything that goes, oh, he goes, I tell you the truth, that this is the only reward they will, they will ever get. But when you fast, again, when, not should or if, comb your hair and wash your face. Stop looking all raggedy, okay? Don't make it, no, don't make it look like that, dude. It don't even have to be that way. Smile. Then no one will notice you're fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And look at this, the father who sees everything will reward you. How many want the reward of heaven, okay? This is, this is what's on the other side of this fasting and prayer experience. Why both? Why both prayer and fasting? Not just fasting and not just prayer. Prayer connects us to God. That's what prayer does. We connect with God in prayer, but fasting disconnects us from the world. And when you combine both of these things where you're drawing closer to God and you're removing, disconnecting from the world, it is so powerful. This fasting, the disconnection from the world is so important because God's anointing, and listen to me, you want God's anointing on your life. Like for you to do what God has called you to do, you need the anointing of God. God's anointing though only comes on consecrated vessels. This isn't some kind of self-punishment to get God's attention. That's not what fasting is. See, the world will, will always try to pull you into itself again. I don't think any one of us here desires to walk away from God or to not follow the will of God. I, none of us, we all love God and we want to love God. But the reality is there's this gravitational pull that the world has on us to selfishness and the things of this world. Here's how the apostle John says it in 1 John chapter 2. Look what he says. He says, don't love the world's ways. Don't love the world's goods. Love of the world squeezes out 
love for the Father. It's not your intent. I know you love God. I know it's not our intention. No one in your, your intention is not to love him. But the reality is, the closer you get to the world, as it pulls you in, and you've lost all self-control, you don't know when to say no anymore. You don't know when to say yes anymore. You're just getting pulled into this world. I know you love God, but what that is doing is squeezing out the love of the Father in your life. That's what John's saying. Practically, everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important, has nothing to do with the Father. It just isolates you from Him, the world, and all of its wanting, wanting, wanting is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. It's this desire, want, pull, pull. See, we were all created like God. God is triune. He is a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we were created in His image with a triune nature, a body, a soul, and a spirit. The reality is, though, every part of our being is, is trying to be in control. It's, all of you, the other, all parts of you want to dominate the others. For instance, your body wants to be calling the shots in your life. Your, your appetites and your, your cravings, your, you know, that, that, they want to be the one that says, follow me. If I want it, do it. And some of you, your body, your appetites and your cravings have been dominating you dictating you, pushing you around, doing things you don't really want to do deep down inside, but because there's this appetite, you just let it run your life. Others of you, you are soul run. And this is like, again, you're so, like all parts of you want to dominate, want to control that soul. Remember what it is, it's your mind, it's your emotions. It's allowing your feelings to just dictate to, because you feel it, because you think it, say it, do it, scream it, don't have it. And some of you, you've you got no gauge on this thing right here. No gauge at all. And you're a soulish Christian. You're, 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 you're an emotional, you got, you got, it's, it's dominating and dictating your life. See, what fasting does is you disconnect yourself from the world. It puts the spirit back in dominance in your life. And that's, I'm telling you, your best life, your best year, the best version of you is when your spirit's in charge, not your body, not your flesh. The best version of you, the best husband, the best mom, or the best wife, the best leader, it's when your spirit is in charge, not your emotions. And so what fasting does is it kind of gets this back in alignment. Fast, fasting, it fosters alignment with God. Let me teach this real quick, and then I'm going to give you some evaluations and talk to you about some things that we need to leave behind this year. But there's four things that fasting will help you align as you start to move into the new year and the new thing that I believe God wants to do. Four things. Number one is this, fasting aligns your posture. And this is where it starts. This is why beginning the year, like with 21 days of prayer and fasting, I think is so great, so pivotal to the rest of your year because it postures you. It like readies you. It gets you in the right position for God to actually speak and for you to hear. Ezra 8.21 says, I proclaim the fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children and all of our possessions. We're going to humble ourselves before God. That's what we're going to do. That's what fasting is. It's humbling. Okay, God, 2024, your will, not mine. I don't want to go through another year of wandering and trying it my way. I'm posturing myself in alignment with you. I humble myself before you, God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my will this year, but yours. Fasting aligns your posture to that of God. Fasting aligns, write this down, your resolve. And you're going to need that this year. If, if you're going to stand the test, if you're going to cross the finish line, if you're going to um, finish the race, like in your relationships, your, your marriage, your, your, your ministry, your family, your work, your health, it needs resolve. Uh, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, he said, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should, because it doesn't want to do what I want it to do. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, okay? My body doesn't want, does, doesn't do what I always want it to do. So I got to beat this thing a little bit, man. Not physically, I'm not like masochist, but you got to like discipline this thing so it's not dictating and dominating. That's what he's saying. Otherwise, I fear after preaching to others, I myself may be disqualified. See, there are some things, here's what you need to resolve, you guys. There are some things that, that you need the resolve to say no to this year. You, 
Like, so you need the resolve to actually say, I'm not doing that no more. That's, no, I'm not having that in my life. You need some resolve for the, you need, hey, check this out. You need some resolve to say yes to the right things. Because you, you want to, you have a desire to, but what you need is the resolve to say, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Okay, that's what we need. That's what fasting does. It not only gives us posture, but man, it gives us power, resolve. Number three, fasting also aligns your focus. Your focus. I remember one year we were doing a fast. It was actually during the 21 days of prayer and fasting. And one, one brother was very new to Christ, new to faith. And, and he said, Pastor Jason, he, I, talk, I was talking to him outside. He said, Pastor Jason, I'm going to do this thing. I've never heard fasting before. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do 21 days. He said, I'm fasting weed, Pastor, 21 days. I was like, well, that's good. <laughs> Praise God. So happy for you. <laughs> Woo. So actually, I want you to hear someone, my well, brother told me, Pastor Jason, I'm fasting sex. I might have sex with my girlfriend for 21 days. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> if that's you, I'm so happy for you. Like, it, please, please, like, fast. Like, get rid of these, rid of these things. But it'd probably be more accurate to say, during my fast, I'm not going to smoke weed. You know, during my fast, during my time of like, of, of fasting and disconnecting from the world, I'm not going to look at porn during 21 days. I'm going to commit to not, I'm not going to be having premarital sex for 21 days during my fast because you don't fast sin, you remove sin. Okay. So, but, but if that's you, you're in that boat, I'm with you, bro. Give it 21 days. Let's go kick that thing, dude. Kick it. Kick her while you're at it too. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Where am I at? Your focus. Your focus, okay. So the, the length of your fast is not, not as important as the strength of your focus during the fast. You see, it's not just like stopping something. I'm gonna stop this. No, it's actually starting the right things too. I'm replacing, I'm gonna remove this, I'm gonna replace it with, with something else that's gonna fix my focus here. See, by surrendering something that satisfies your flesh like, like food, to, what you're doing is you're making room for the spirit to move in your life. Proverbs 29, 18 says, if people can't see what God is doing, we're just going to stumble all over ourselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they're most blessed. See, that's what prayer, fasting, this combination does. I'm not just letting stuff go. I'm adding the right thing so I can catch revelation from God. I want, I want the blessing of God, which I, if I want the, God's blessing on my life, I need to attend to what he reveals. I need to be able to catch it when he gives it to me. So I got to get the right focus here. I got to get my mind right. So during 21 days, it's not just fasting. So I'm going to get rid of this food group or this timeline. I'm going to combine that with prayer. I'm going to intentionally pray. I'm going to intentionally read God's word. I'm going to intentionally worship. I'm not just going to let like Sunday come and that be the thing. If you're new to faith, I always encourage like a, like a five, 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 I call it a 15 minute devotion time. Everyone, you, everyone can start here. If you don't have a devotion time, a time with God. Five minutes of prayer, five minutes of worship, five minutes in the word. That could be your starting point. For some of you, that'd be a great starting point to spend 15 minutes of your day. Maybe the, I suggest morning, evening, whatever it is, but, but get into the presence of God. Pray, read your word, and worship. Let me read that again, that, that verse, Acts 13 and 2 that I started with. Because it said, while they were worshiping and fasting, it wasn't just removing stuff. I was actually, uh, there, we need to add things that actually get the voice of God in our life. So, so here's a challenge for you. I would love for you to take me up on this challenge. Hey, for 21 days, let's do this discovery. For 21 days, let's not listen to any music that isn't praise and worship. For 21 days. Okay, I've given you this challenge before. Some of you have taken it up and it's changed your life. I've heard the testimonies. Let me, let me just challenge you that haven't taken it. For 21 days, you guys, January 7th to 27th, let's just remove everything from our ears that is receiving things that isn't from heaven. And let's just grab, let's just grab heaven, man. And all praise and all worship coming in. I'm telling you, your focus will, will change. This is so important because your life is going to move in the direction of your focus. Whatever direction you're looking, that's what direction your life is going. Fasting aligns your focus. And then lastly, fasting aligns your heart. And this is what, look, God is sending, listen to me, he's sending seed to you. 
He's sending you what you need to accomplish what he wants you to accomplish. He's, but it's in seed form. He doesn't give it to you already and perfect. He doesn't give you the job all wrapped up, the promotion all wrapped up. He doesn't give you the marriage all wrapped up. He gives you, uh, you know, a date. <laughs> he, gives, he gives you an opportunity for, for, uh, uh, for the promotion, an opportunity to, to prove yourself. He gives, it's in seed form. I'm telling you, God has given you seed, the only thing that's going to prevent you from receiving fruit from it is your heart. It's the posture of your heart. Is it ready? Is our heart ready? And fasting is going to till the soil here like, like many other things cannot do as much fasting can. Joel chapter 2 says, even now declares the Lord. Even now, like it, at, when Joel was writing this, they were so far away from the things of God, pagan worship, idolatry, children's sacrifices, all kind. You think you're far away from God? These people are far away from God. But even now, listen to me, I don't care how far you are. I don't care what you did this year. It was a good year, mess up year, whatever. You, you may have went as far, further than you ever gone before. You went back to things that you never said you would go back to. You said, I'll never do that again. And you did it. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, not just your garments. Here's what he's saying. Being sorry is not the same thing as repenting. I want your heart. Don't just be sorry about it. Like, dang it, man, I'm so mad at myself. No, 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 no. Your heart. Rend your heart. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. I want you to join me on this journey, you guys. Next Sunday, we'll begin it. 21 days of prayer and fasting. But as we look ahead I love what John Maxwell, he says, experience isn't the best teacher. Aren't, don't you agree? Experience is not the best teacher. If it was, everyone with experience would be better, and they're not. You'd be better because you're older, and you're not better just because you're older. You're not, no one's better just because they have experience. Experience isn't the best teacher. It's evaluated experience that's the best teacher, right? It's what I evaluate. How am I, what am I learning from this year, this experience? What am I evaluating from it. And there are some things that I do every year. It actually begins for me in Thanksgiving. November timeline is when my evaluation begins. I actually begin by going over my phone and my, and my photos, and I go through the entire year slowly and look at my year and just analyze, God, what do you want me to learn about this? What was, what was there, God? And I, and I look through my entire year, starting in Thanksgiving, and I do that to have gratitude, but that actually helps me start to analyze my, my entire year. Here are some, some questions for you to start to ask yourself beginning today. I'd even encourage you to separate yourself a little bit today or even sometime during this week as we're getting ready for 21 days of prayer and fasting. Ask yourself three questions. I'm just gonna help you give some anal evaluation tools so you can go into the new year ready for a new thing God wants to do. Three questions to ask yourself. What one thing, if it got better, would make the biggest difference? Well, this is such a great question. Even for you business owners in here, if you're a leader or a business owner, this is a question that'll change your, it'll, it'll help set you up your business for the next year, your marriage, your life. What one thing, if it got better, would make the biggest difference? Because the reality is you can't do everything, but you can do something. Where's your energy gonna go? What one thing? See, I got this, this bucket here as an, as an example. There's, it doesn't matter how much water I put in this bucket. It's, it's leaking out the lowest slat. It doesn't matter how much of God you get and the word of God you get and worship nights you get. It doesn't matter. If, if one of your slats is lower, you'll never be full. So where, where in your life, where in your life is the lowest slat? Where it, for some of you, it might be your marriage. Man, I need, I, we just don't pray together. We don't, have, we don't have a solid marriage. I feel like my relationship with God is good, but my marriage, I, that's like a low slap for me because that's where the enemy attacks. For some of you, it may be your work. It may be your habits. It may be your health or something. Like, like your health needs to get in alignment finally with God. Like, man, that's the low slap there, man. I love God, full of God, but really this is a limiting factor in my life. It doesn't matter how much you get poured in if it's going out the lowest slap. So another way to ask that question is, the second way, is to say, you know, what am I not doing that I should be doing? And what am I currently doing that I should stop doing? I'm just trying to give you now some, some ways to evaluate so that you can not just get through 2023, 
you know, not just have the experience, because the experience ain't doing nothing for you if you don't evaluate it. It's evaluated experience, you guys. And so what I have did is recently here, I, I, I created this and modified a, 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 what I'm calling like a dashboard, like 12 life points on a dashboard. And, and y'all, your life has a dashboard, like your car has a dashboard. You look at it, you go, okay, I get a kind of like the health of my car. I got my, got my gas, I got my oil. It's about as, as much as I know about cars right there. I don't know. There's other things on there, <laughs> other dials that are on that thing, right? <laughs> uh, you, got, you got 12 dials on your dashboard that I want to give you. They're not in your notes, but if you want to take a picture of these or something like that, here's what I'm encouraging you to do. At some point today, even this week, look through this list and ask yourself, how am I doing really? Maybe what you need to do is set some goals for the new year according to your dashboard. Maybe write down one sentence for each one of these and say, what you're going to do in the new year to be healthy, like in my faith life, my relationship with God. That's my prayer, my word, my Bible, my, my worship life. How am I doing here? I, hey, let me encourage you to do this. Give yourself a grade for every one of these. A, B, C, D, or F. Why are they skipped E? I don't even know, man. But uh, they go to F. Your faith life, your marriage life, my relationship with my spouse. If you're not married, make this your dating life, your family life, your office, like your job or your school, your digital life. That's your time on your devices. Does that need to change? Analyze that. Like, like, look at the actual time. Go to the settings. See when you're, how much time you're actually spending on that thing and evaluate it and make the shifts. Is that who you want to be? Is that the direction you want to continue to go in the new year? Your ministry life, that's your purpose in life. Some of you are like, well, I'm not in ministry. Yes, you are. If you're a Christian, you're in ministry. Are you serving God through your purpose? Honestly, there is no place for any of us to do nothing. Every one of us can do something, Okay. So how is it then? So is, it, is it A, B, C, D, or F? Your financial life, that's all your earning, spending, saving, giving. And honestly, that's the, the proper order is opposite of that. It should be giving, saving, spending. Okay. So how are you doing with the resources God has entrusted you? Are you tithing? What about your unstoppable commitment? Are you being generous? That's your financial life, your social life, your time with friends. You need other people in your life. Some of you need other people. You got the wrong people. You need, you need the right people in your life. Analyze it. What grade are you giving yourself? Your attitudinal life. Do you got the Tigger attitude? You know what I mean? Like, I can do it. I can do it. Yes, I can. I'm going to have gratitude, right? Not going to dwell on the past. Your creative life, your dreams, plans for your future. For me, it's writing. I know this next year, I'm going to spend a lot of time writing. It's just what God has put a season in my life where I'm writing more mental life, my mind and my thoughts, right? My emotion even. What am I allowing into my mind? What's influencing and controlling my life? What's my thinking life that? Some of you got stinking thinking. You need to figure it out. 12, your physical life, your body, your exercise, your sleep, your eat. These, these are just some, some dash, a dashboard, some dials for you to evaluate your year so you can not just go through it. All of us went through it, but you, did you actually grow through it? Okay, because you, y'all went through it, we go through it, but not all of us are growing through it. And I just want you to grow through it and go to the next level in this next year. Okay, here's the big question, really. What should we bring with us into 2024? And what should we leave behind? There are some things that, some lessons you learn that you need to make sure you don't fall into the same landmines in this new year. Okay, take them with you. But there is a lot of things that don't belong in the new year. Let me give you three of them, okay? Three things, and then we're going to pray together. Three things that don't belong, that you need to leave behind today. December 31st, drop it, leave it. It does not belong in your future and in the new year. Number one is this. You got to leave behind your old history. That old, that old history, man. Sometimes we get stuck in some moments and some seasons, even some good ones, some successful ones. Some of you are living on yesterday's successes and what you did for God 10 years ago, and it's time for God to do a new thing. Wake up. Wake up. God wants to do a new thing, okay? Leave behind the old history. Some of you are stuck in the bad stuff, some, old, some, some bad things that happened to you, and you were never meant to just stay there. Everything you went through, are you ready for this? This year, it was for your good. It was for your development. It was a lesson to teach you and to develop you. It wasn't supposed to be a destination. Your past is education, not destination. 
Some of you are holding on to your history at the expense of your destiny. And, and, and I know you can't erase it, but you don't have to carry it. Sometimes only if you leave behind your history, listen to me, it means you got to leave, leave behind some old people. Because I'm telling you, in your 2024, in your new year, you need to surround yourself who, with people whose definition of you is not your history, but your destiny. Isaiah 43, he says it like this, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the good. Don't dwell on the bad. Why? Because God wants to do a new thing. There's a new thing coming. It's springing up. Do you perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the way, wasteland. So how do I do that though, pastor? I'd love to forget it. I'd love to leave it. Here's how. If you run after your destiny, you'll automatically distance yourself from your history. Are you hearing me, church? You've allowed what happened to you and your past experiences, whether they're good or bad, they paralyze you. You need to get your feet moving again. If you run after what's in front of you, you'll escape what's behind you. Amen. Just get moving. Leave behind your old history. God's going to do a new thing. Number two, leave behind your old hurts. Some of them came from this year. Some of them came from a while ago, and you've been carrying them over every year, carrying it over, carrying it over. Now, this one is a process that God wants to get involved in, and I, I, would, lo I would love for you to invite us, your church family, into the process of, of working through your hurts this next year, of, of navigating through, letting some stuff go, the things that have attached to you, some people who let you down. So you were disappointed big time. You had some losses. You took some L's. You, you, you grieving the, some deaths that have, that have happened, whether this year or in the past, you're still carrying the weight of that in your heart. A relationship was broken, was lost, and it's a hurt that you're still carrying today. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. Some of y'all need that. You need new. All this from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. God is bringing us back to himself. I was reading this, this book here recently called um, The Road Back to You. It's, it's by the guy who created the Enneagram. He's actually a Christian and a pastor. Um, he got to, uh, he had a really successful ministry, got to a really tough place in his life because he said yes to everything. He just, he was, he was addicted to pleasing people and, and, and thought too much about what people thought about him and really wanted to please the people around him. And, and so he said yes to everything. He said yes to them and accommodate everybody. And he got to a place in his life and his ministry and his marriage where he was burnt out. He, just got to, he had to let go of the church, let go of, he had to back away from, from everything. And he got, came back to this place of like, who am I? What, what, what am I even called to, called to do? And he went through this journey and developed like a personality profile through it. That's where we get the Enneagram. But he discovered like, God, I drifted so far away from your, per from my, from your design for my life. And so he wrote this book called The Road Back to You to find out who God really called him to be. And some of us who are here, some, you've been hurt, but you can't stay there. And some of us, God has been drawing us back to who he's called us to be, and he's trying to develop the authentic you, not the you that's trying to impress your dad, the, the you that doesn't care about winning everyone's approval, the you that isn't detoured by your old history and your old hurts, those things God is actually using to get to the authentic you. We gotta leave behind the old history and the old hurts. It's something you need to take a road back to him. Allow him to reconcile you, bring you back to himself this year. And number three, this one's huge. We need to leave behind some old habits this year. Leave it behind today. Don't take it with you. Don't take some of that old history. Don't take your old hurts. Don't take some of these old habits. Now look, we all have some. I got some, you got some, okay? And the Bible is very clear. Listen to me. You are not slave to your habits. Those can change in Jesus' name. You can be free from those things. Those, your habits are not your identity and they don't define you. There is freedom for you in the power of Jesus. But one of the primary ways that God does this is through prayer and fasting. I'm telling you, if you go on this journey, if you take this journey with me, I believe God can get you some freedom in your life. Isaiah 58 verse 6 says, Is not this the kind of fasting I've chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free, 
and break every yoke. In other words, to take those things that have become habits in our life and break the yoke and set us free. Like, I need to get away from some things, man. I need to get away from some foods that I've, that I've you know, said yes too much to. I need to get away from some things I've just been, been watching, some news and some things. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm too jacked in to certain things, man. I just, and I need, to, I need to break some habits, man. I, they can't come with me. Some old habits that cannot come with me into this next year. Now, you, look, need, none of us can go back in time in 2023 and change some stuff and make some stuff right. If you dwell on that stuff, though, they'll continue to dictate and dominate your life. I like to say it like this can't go back and change the beginning, but I can start where I am and change the ending. And that's the invitation today, December 31st, New Year's Eve. I want us all to step into a new year, a year I'm calling the year of freedom. God has freedom for you this year if you'll take the journey. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.